Maca's guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Maka here, and welcome to my most anticipated games of 2019 video. I'll be talking about the 15 games that I am personally most excited for. Now, I did work on a video similar to this one last year. However, it never ended up coming out because I had some computer issues. I did actually upload a private draft of that video. I will leave the link in the description if you'd want to watch basically what ended up being half of a video. But nonetheless, this is supposed to be a yearly series where I talk about some games that are coming out in the future that I'm very excited for, and this video should be no different. A couple of quick ground rules to set out before we get started. Number one is that the game actually has to come out in 2019, and I have to be somewhat confident that that's going to happen, which means games like Cyberpunk 2077 and The Last of Us Part Two will not be on my list. If there is a game that you hope that I will talk about that I don't end up talking about, it's either because I feel that it is unlikely to release in 2019 with confidence, or it's just a game that I'm personally not excited for, but it's okay if you are. This is obviously an opinion video, and feel free to share your own opinion about what you're excited to play in the future in the comments down below. Let's get started with number 15. Now, starting off my list, I actually have Mortal Kombat 11, which was announced at the Game Awards, although I think the trailer wasn't all that great. I do think the Mortal Kombat series, as well as the studio behind it, makes some of the best fighting games out there, including Mortal Kombat 10 and Injustice 2, which I both played and enjoyed both of them. However, with that being said, I'm generally not a huge fan of fighting games. I'm pretty terrible at them, and I don't get to enjoy them maybe for as long and as intensely as other people. Nonetheless, I'm still very excited for Mortal Kombat 11. I played a lot of the earlier Mortal Kombats in my childhood, and I'm sure it'll be a great game, and I'm excited to give it a try for those reasons. In the number 14 spot, I have the game Control, which is basically Quantum Break 2. It was announced at E3 at the PlayStation Conference, and this game looks like it has a lot of the elements that made Quantum Break a really great game, while also hopefully evolving some of the game mechanics that weren't used to their full potential in Quantum Break. They describe it as a supernatural third-person action-adventure game that will challenge you to master a combination of supernatural abilities, modifiable loadouts, and reactive environments while fighting through a deep and unpredictable world and that is a very intriguing concept to me and some of the artwork like the screenshots they've released and the trailer are also very intriguing hopefully this game learned from quantum break and evolves on that recipe to make an even better game and that's why i have control on my list Although out of all the games on my list, I think this one is one of the more likely ones to get pushed back to 2020. In the number 13 position, I have the Dark Pictures Anthology by Supermassive Games, which is most recently and most well known for releasing Until Dawn a few years ago. And the first game as part of the Dark Pictures Anthology they'll be releasing is called Man of Madon. Now these games are a series of intense but standalone horror games and this first one is going to come out in 2019 with more to come in the future over time. We don't have too much information to go on other than a couple of trailers and some dev diaries but judging from their past work on games like Until Dawn I think there is a lot of potential here to create a really creepy game, a great horror game, a suspenseful game, but also a narrative game. And hopefully this whole anthology comes together, and hopefully also this first little story, Man of Madon, comes out and is great. So I'm looking forward to that in 2019. In number 12, I have The Outer Worlds, which is currently being worked on by Obsidian with a 2019 release date. Although, in my opinion, it is likely to get pushed back to 2020. This is a game that a lot of people are excited for because of its potential to play like Fallout New Vegas 2. Because this is the studio that created Fallout New Vegas. And with the direction Fallout 76 has taken and the way Bethesda has been treating the series, 
a lot of people are excited at the prospect of going back and kind of re-experiencing Fallout the way they think it's supposed to be, and I am one of those people. The game will take players on a journey through the entire solar system in order to solve a conspiracy, and there seem to be some really great sci-fi elements in there. The graphics look to be done in the right style, and the art also seems to be very colorful and bright. So there is a lot of potential to look forward to, and a lot of outlets that have already had a chance to play it. Compare it to a little bit of a mix of Fallout and Mass Effect, which I think a lot of RPG fans would be really psyched to hear as well. Also, for those wondering, this is an Obsidian game. Obsidian is owned right now by Microsoft. However, this game will not be a Xbox exclusive. It is available on the PS4 and will be available on the PC as well. In the number 11 position, I have Wolfenstein Youngblood. And the reason it's kind of lower than traditionally I would rank a Wolfenstein game is because this gives off the kind of standalone DLC vibe. It is a co-op game, although it can be played solo. It's kind of designed to be played in co-op. It doesn't feature our main kind of protagonist as BJ Blazkowicz. Instead, you're playing some kind of side characters, which we'll learn more about. And I'm sure the gameplay will be great. However, I am a little bit cautious because of some of the design changes they made to Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. And I hope some of them don't carry over and become a problem in this one. I hope this is the bounce back game for Wolfenstein, as I thought the last two weren't their greatest showings. But Wolfenstein Youngblood should be a lot of fun. If it's designed well in co-op, it could be a really unique game and a really unique experience to play with a friend. And for those reasons, I am cautiously optimistic. In the number 10 position, I have Gears 5. They got rid of the Gears of War moniker and now it is just Gears. Nonetheless, Gears 5 should build on the series in hopefully new and exciting ways. At the same time, I've played a lot of Gears of War in my life and I don't know what they could possibly do to really revolutionize the gameplay and the series. So although I am excited and will probably play the game for a fair bit of time, I am maybe not as excited as for some of the other games on our list. There have also been some rumor swirlings going around that maybe the story will be pretty bare bones, which would be pretty unfortunate because I'm not much of a Gears of War online player myself, but hopefully there are some co-op elements and some story things there for those who will be playing. Now, another cool thing is that this game will be available day one in Game Pass, which is probably a great thing for the community and should really help out the game with a large player population Thanks. right off the bat. And I'm still really excited to see what they change and what kind of new things they come up with for Gears of War 5. The graphics obviously look great. It's still Gears of War and uh, they have a great IP there. So I'm still pretty excited, although there are some games that I think will be a lot more unique coming up in the year. At the number nine position, I have Rage 2, which from all the gameplay I've seen, seems like just a lot of fun and a lot of mindless shooting, which is something I really like every now and again. A lot of games take themselves really seriously and it seems like Rage 2 is not one of those games. They seem to just give you guns, they seem to just give you explosives and let you kind of go crazy. It's also pretty cool that they seem to have a large focus on kind of vehicles in the game and kind of make it a little bit of a Mad Max style of game, which should also be pretty exciting. The gameplay also is very reminiscent of Doom, which is not a bad thing by any means, and it does seem like there was a little bit of collaboration between studios at Bethesda to make this game, so hopefully you get a little bit of the best from every studio, and hopefully Rage 2 is a game that not only looks great and plays great, but is also a game that is really fun and unique. In the number eight spot, I have Doom Eternal. I was only able to find one little source that said this game was coming out in 2019, so it might get pushed back, who knows? But Doom in 2016 was an absolutely phenomenal game, and I know a lot of people on the channel actually used my videos for that, and I had an absolutely great time not only playing the game, but making those videos. And I really hope Do Doom Eternal follows in the steps of the game from three years ago. Now, it is very likely to be a very similar game and almost feel like a little bit of an expansion. They're obviously not going to change the formula too much, but hopefully the addition of new levels, a couple of new gameplay mechanics or weapons should really create a great game. 
There's still a lot we don't know about Doom Eternal, but nonetheless, I'm still very excited to play it. Next up in the number 7 spot, I have Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, which is an upcoming action-adventure game by From Software, which is a known studio for making Souls-like games. They actually make THE Souls game, and this one is an interesting kind of twist and spin on their previous games with a completely new art style. I've never really been like a huge fan of the Souls genre, but I'm hoping that maybe this game can change that for me and maybe I can get really into it and really power through the campaign and actually make my way to the end of it and hopefully defeat all of the bosses. From what we've seen so far, the game looks super cool and we don't have too much time to wait as the game releases on March 22nd of 2019. In at the number 6 position, I have Ori and the Will of the Wisps, a game that feels like I've been waiting a long time for. Should be coming out in 2019, launching straight into Game Pass, which is pretty exciting. But they take the formula from Ori and the Blind Forest, which was a fantastic game, one of my favorite games the year it came out, and they add a whole lot of new things to it to increase the replayability and variety in the game, which I think are the two most necessary things to turn Ori into a top tier game. I also got a chance to play this game at E3 2018 and as I expected it felt fantastic. The controls were super tight, a lot of the little new moves I got to see were super cool. You can dig under sand and launch yourself into the sky from the sand. There are monsters and things you can kill in the sand and there was a lot of really cool things I got to try out and I'm hoping that is not just a segmented part of the game but is something that is a overarching theme throughout the game. Hopefully we also get a fantastic story once again, which I am optimistic for. So Ori and the Will of the Wisps, number six. Number five, Trials Rising. I don't have too much to say about this one. If you've been following the channel for many, many years, you may very well know that Trials is one of my favorite series of all time. I have sunk about a thousand hours into it and pretty much platinumed 95% of the tracks within the game. And Trials Rising is a game that I am obviously looking forward to, looking to get through all the tracks on gold, maybe platinum all of them, find the squirrels. There are also new diamond medals in the game, all new tracks, all new different types of bikes and minigames. It should be a great time. They've also seemed to have uh, changed their focus a little bit. In the last couple of games, we had a lot of crazy mechanics. We had tricks in the air. They've seemed to went back to basics and focused precisely and mostly on the motorbike and the physics and that is what I personally wanted and I think a lot of people in the community wanted there is also some new things like the tandem bike which I got to try at E3 which I really enjoyed and I have a lot of optimism for Trials Rising being the Trials game that I've always wanted and some people may not understand my addiction with Trials although I think many of you might it's one of those games easy to play hard to master and once you get addicted and you start feeling that potential to gold and platinum every track, you just keep playing and getting better and better and better, grinding off milliseconds off of your time. And the sense of accomplishment and rewarding feeling you get from doing that is unrivaled. In at the number four position, I have The Division 2, which is probably very surprising for some people, but maybe not as surprising for other people as The Division is quite a polarizing series. A lot of people really enjoyed the first game, but a lot of people were also really disappointed by the end game. In my opinion, I was a person that really enjoyed the first 100 hours of going through the story with friends, grinding up to a high level, getting the best guns and gear I could have, and clearing out high level enemies on my way to a thousand gamer score. However, after I did that, I kind of just wanted to put the game down and move on. However, for those who wanted to stick around the game and play it for 200, 300, or 400 hours, there was a little bit of a struggle there with the content. Now, I don't know if the end game content is something that they're going to address in The Division 2. There's not too much information about it out there so far. But what I can say is that I've played the game and I really enjoyed my time with it. Having classes and abilities really adds to the gameplay in my opinion and hopefully it's a great team shooter, a great tactical shooter, and plays like a really great MMORPG style of shooter. 
and hopefully builds on the strengths of the division one but also adds new strengths while avoiding some of the cons of the game i'm excited for the division two and i actually think it'll be a fantastically selling game and I think the vast majority of people will get their money's worth. In the number three position, off of the vein of The Division 2, we have Anthem. A game that is going to be in the similar genre, and a game that is 100% going to be competing with The Division 2. And it's a game that I think has a lot of potential, but I am very cautiously optimistic because it is being made by EA, and EA has let me down too many times in the past. I know a lot of people have gotten the chance to play Anthem, I am not one of those people unfortunately, but it does look like a game that has a lot of potential like I said, but it also has a lot of potential to innovate in the genre that it's going to come out in. And that's always one of the most exciting things for me when looking forward to games, is how is this game going to innovate, how is the genre going to change because of this game, and how will the video game industry adapt with these new things added to the genre. I think as long as the game isn't too shallow and doesn't lack a lot of content at launch, it stands a pretty good chance of being successful, but I also think this one's going to be pretty risky. It could also be one of the biggest flops of the year, because it is coming out in a week where there are 5 or 6 quality games to play, and it is somewhat of a potentially niche genre when you're competing against games like Metro Exodus, Crackdown 3, The Division 2, Sekiro and more. In at the number two position I have the Resident Evil 2 remake and I'm not sure why I'm so incredibly excited to play this game. Maybe it's because the game is less than a month away and it's probably the first major game of 2019 or maybe it's the fact that I never actually got a chance to play a Resident Evil 2 way back in the day and I was really surprised by the announcement of there being a remake and the remake seems to have really been taken care of and done the right way. I also kind of like the simple vision of this. It's a classic game. They're remastering it, reimagining it. They're not adding any kind of multiplayer or co-op modes. It's just a story mode. You know what you're going to get. You're going to get a 10-hour campaign. You're going to get 20 hours if you want to go through and kind of be a little bit of a completionist. And then you can kind of move on. It's not one of those games that's like demanding your whole life for the rest of the year it's not one of those games where you need to get all your friends together to enjoy it's just a sit down by yourself and experience a game game and i like that about it so i'm pretty excited to give it a try and i'm actually pretty surprised that it's ranking so high on my list but when i was putting together my list that's just where it fell in at the number one position of my most anticipated game of 2019 is Metro Exodus. I have been patiently waiting for many years for there to be a new Metro game, as Metro 2033 and Metro Last Light are some of my favorite first-person shooters of all time. Now, the Metro series is known for a lot of things. Obviously, it's going to be probably one of the best-looking games of all year, which is something a lot of people get really excited about. For me, what I get excited about is how well Metro builds an atmosphere in their game and sets up a game world which is believable and feels lived in. Now, I actually got a chance to play Metro Exodus on the Xbox One X at E3, and there were a lot of things that impressed me. First of all, it still felt like Metro, but there was enough change in the game that it really felt like a big step forward in the series. I also really enjoyed the fact that it is still kind of a horror game, but doesn't rely on a lot of the kind of horror game stereotypes that we're used to. Additionally, I'm a huge fan of the fact that stealth feels like a very viable option throughout the entire game. I actually asked you guys on Twitter what game you were most excited for in the year 2019 and I was surprised to see that a lot of people responded with Metro Exodus. I always thought I was a little bit of a hipster for liking this game, but it seems like the fever has caught on and I'm excited that other people are excited. That's going to be my number one most anticipated game for the year and it comes out pretty soon so we should be enjoying it pretty soon. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Now, there are some honorable mentions, and I'm sure there's some games you guys are wondering about why I didn't include on the list. 
One of them might be Crackdown 3. And the reason is because I've been waiting for Crackdown 3 since 2016, and then 2017 and 2018, and I've kind of waited so long for the game that I'm just ready for it to come out, but I lost a little bit of my excitement for that game. Nonetheless, I hope it is an amazing game. Another game that didn't make my list was Devil May Cry 5. It's just not really my style of game. I will be playing it and I hope to enjoy it. It's just not necessarily a game that I am personally excited to play. I'm not going to be running home and turning it on the minute I get it, but it hopefully will be a game I enjoy nonetheless. Lastly, I'm sure a lot of you are very excited for Kingdom Hearts 3, a game that I have actually played quite a fair bit amount of. I have never played a Kingdom Hearts game before Kingdom Hearts 3 though, so I'm not very tied to the franchise. I'm going in knowing almost nothing about the game, so instead of feeling excited and anticipating it, I almost feel a little bit overwhelmed with Kingdom Hearts 3. But again, it is a game that I will hopefully play and enjoy, so just because they're not in my list doesn't mean that I'm hating on these games or have negative things to say about them. But there are different reasons for different games being on my list and not being on my list. I hope you guys understand. And again, I would encourage you to use the comments in a constructive way to let me know what you're excited for. Again, though, thank you guys so much for watching. A special thanks to the amazing people on Patreon for supporting the show. Drop a like on the video if you can in order to help it out. And hopefully I see you in the next one. Peace!